Hello and welcome to to, the, to Thursday's today's video. Um, today we'll be demonstrating the operation of the Sega CD. Now, technically, this is the third time I've done the introduction to this video. The first time I uh, made I made it, the camera was out of focus, it was all blurry, but it didn't matter because in the end, Sony Vegas decided, well, let's turn it into a brown screen. The second time I did it like this, but because this sucker was plugged in, um, the audio turned out really quiet because this was all the way over here, and the audio, even though the audio is shit, it's coming from a uh, webcam on top, so, you know, you take what you get, so, anyway, um, this is kind of stupid, but I am making these videos because I want video game preservation to be taken as seriously as railway preservation. I have nothing against railway preservation because I love trains. I love locomotives. Over there I have the first 26 books of the railway series written by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey. I have several Thomas DVDs over there. Right now it has a bunch of other DVDs with it. Um, I own a shit ton of Thomas One Railway stuff. I know... That's kind of bullshit because railway preservationists look down upon Thomas the Tank Engine, especially Chris and Green, because, you know, the E2s, yeah, I agree with them, E2s are shit locomotives, but I mean, it's, are you really going to shit upon it even more just because, because some blue thing, it's like, it's like saying, it's like if a guy hated a hedgehog, but then hates hedgehogs even more because of Sonic the Hedgehog, that's stupid. But anyway, let's get into the video. Nice, so the TV is on, and as just for an, just for notation, um, this we'll be just demonstrating its ability to play audio CDs, and unlike the PS2 last time, it doesn't play anything else as far as multimedia functionality is concerned. But um, here we have the tel the television all booted up. It's a uh, I would say a '90s era CRT with a with AV and, and uh, antenna connections, part for the course. All right, so. So by the way, this is a Model 1 Sega Genesis that I got at a yard sale, and it's an original model too. It's got the 16-bit embossed, the high-definition graphics. This is the version that's... Sorry about that, folks. I Something happened, I jumped, and... um. This is a Model 1 Sega Genesis, an original one, has the best sound quality supposedly, but it, you know, they all sound the same. So let's flip this switch, and it should boot up. Let's zoom in. See if I can get this. Maybe it's a little too zoomed. Alright. So, now, the thing about the Sega CD is that, just like the PS2, it has aesthetic, but it has its, but it's not like, sort of the minimalist, sort of, techno, sort of, late, early 2000s, late 90s thing, this is more of an early to mid 90s sort of deal. So here we have a, the Sega CD logo, in its own colorful sort of thing going on, uh, it's, the reason it has the weird little effects is just to is because the Sega CD, they added a lot of features that, like, the Super Nintendo had, so it has more colors than the Sega Genesis' uh, 512 maximum color palette. It also has a bunch of weird Mode 7-ish effects, so... Yeah, so anyway. To demonstrate its audio capabilities, I have with me... Lack Megantic 1, the... The previous Lac Megantic that we used was actually a uh, was actually the second one. This is the first one. So let's get that going. So there's no real thing to click the disc in, so you just put it in and it... Alright, by the way, this is a three-button Sega Genesis controller. Fairly standard. So let's press the start button. Here is sort of the music CD player sort of thing. Here we have CD plus graphics. If you have like, 
I don't know, like a thing, like a weird thing that has like karaoke discs or whatever. Uh, it's just all right. So let's press this. That buzzing outside is just people landscaping or whatever. So for those who don't know, this is the theme. This is the ending theme to Blood Debts. So let's go to the next one. Now this. So I have a thing for Serbian Turbo Folk, and this is a song called Cerny Bombardier by uh, Roki Volovic. It's basically about, you know, how Serbia that one time shot down a UN stealth bomber. And here's the thing about stealth bombers is, how much money do you have to spend on a stupid piece of aircraft that can easily be defeated by just, you know, modified, by a modified radar unit, like, whatever. Kuti Kuti Yuko. And here's the theme to Cutie Honey. All right, anyway, here we go. Anyway, I'm just going to take Black Megantic out, and I think my camera's running out of battery, so we'll just put this away. Quickly demonstrate its ability to play games. And like I said earlier with the uh, PlayStation 1, uh, PlayStation 2, actually, uh, thing, I will be putting in Lunar the Silver Star. Now, this is what I would say is arguably the most expensive game in my collection. A lot of the working designs, RPGs, especially on Sega consoles, cost a shit ton of money. I think I remember plonking down, like, 80 bucks for this. I mean, it's well worth it, but I mean, good lord. So let's reset so I can see, so we can see how it does. Alright, so it's checking disc... Press the start button, and then this appears. With the working designs logo. Looking bomb as ever. Anyway, as far as demonstration goes, this is as far as we're going to take it because, again, game all different games play differently compared to one another, so... This is a uh, JRPG, so, you know, you got, you got overworld controls, you got all sorts of other things in. Hold on. Don't know why it's... Oh, well. This is a camera aimed at a CRT, so the black, so the weird lines and shit, you know, that's just scan lines and shit. Anyway, this concludes the, uh, demonstration of the Sega CD. Please leave a, uh, please leave a, a sub sandwich and a like or whatever. Also, this game is, has a bomb intro.